Hey, what's up? I'm Al Cox. I play games, make games, and everything in between. And today we are talking about BuildBox 3 and the no code movement. You like mobile games? I like mobile games. Don't forget to like and subscribe. So let's just get into it. I've been using BuildBox 2 for so long and I want BuildBox 3 to be BuildBox 2, but it's not. It is a completely different beast with all different avenues and facets of depth that I'm still trying to comprehend. What is the no code movement? Hashtag no code. You've probably seen it all over Twitter, maybe YouTube. It's a cool idea that is in its infancy and only beginning to grow more and more. No code gets its foundation from code. What it is is pre-written code designed in a way that you can have multiple pieces all work together making it very simple for someone who doesn't exactly know how to write each individual code which can be complicated and complex and to take the bare bones function of this piece of code and connect it all together. The dream goal is to be able to make a game without any code. BuildBox 2 does this beautifully, but today we are talking about BuildBox 3 because BuildBox 3 is another beast. If you want to see a BuildBox 2 game made with no code, I have a lot of videos where I'm literally going through the day-to-day -day process of making a game. BuildBox 3 and the no code movement is in its infancy. It doesn't have a lot of information, a lot of best practices of how to make the best and coolest game with the tools at hand. BuildBox 3 tools are all new and still getting the kinks worked out of them. BuildBox posted on the blog a bunch of games that have been out built with BuildBox 3, all of which I've played except for one which isn't out yet, looks super cool and when it does come out I will definitely play it. Night Fighter, this is probably one of the best and coolest games out there built with BuildBox 3. Be sure to check out my review and download and play the game so you can see what is possible in BuildBox 3 with minimal amount of code. I believe all these games, somebody was writing code in BuildBox 3. Coin Dizzy, oh that's by Ben Scriven too? Oh, I didn't know that, that's cool, good for him. Pod Race, this game is cool and is always being updated. Oh, it's by Ponyom Games. They literally have a game in the top three in that they built a prototype with BuildBox 3. They know how to code, then ported it to Unity because of ad metrics and publishers. Things get complicated. They're doing great. Picker 3D, which is currently number five, last week it was at number one, was prototyped in BuildBox 3 and that game is Super fun, satisfying. Check out this game, download it. I'll put links below. You can play this game and see how it has basic core mechanics that you can achieve writing code in BuildBox 3. Again, this was ported to Unity, which is the go-to game engine that literally 97% of game developers use. And if you know how to code in C Sharp, you're probably not watching this video and you're making games in Unity. Yeah, play Padres 3D. Toboggan, played this game, also super fun. Drone Escape is almost copy pasted from a template in BuildBox and I'll show you that in a little bit. They've added some cool features, characters, elements, but it to me looks almost exactly like the template itself. Drones also has a lot of strong familiarity to BuildBox templates. So let's just go ahead and jump into BuildBox 3 right now. Now I want to show you this because I, I have multiple BuildBox versions because BuildBox gets a little complicated when you're trying to update it and some updates work in some places and other updates don't ever get updated. I don't know, I'm very confused, but here's the latest, greatest BuildBox 3. When talking about BuildBox 3, I think it's important to get a clear understanding of hierarchy. And I want it to be known that I don't know how to use BuildBox 3 yet. There's a video by Nathaniel Drew on YouTube, who's a really dope YouTuber that I like, and he has a video on how things are learned. It's called the four stages of competence. You got unconscious incompetence. That is where you begin if you've never opened up BuildBox 3 or, and, and honestly, I haven't opened up BuildBox 3 in 
maybe two weeks. I was opening it up every day, going through this unconscious incompetence, which is something I did when it came to BuildBox 2. I didn't know what I was doing. I just opened it every day and spent hours upon hours trying to figure out what's going on over here and there. The same thing will need to be done for BuildBox three, but in a longer time capacity. Right now, I'm just gonna move this camera around. To be honest, I've also been spending a lot of time with Blender, so, you know, time is valuable. But doing something like this, you can see how it's, this template has a very similar mechanics to, to Drone Escape. Making Drone Escape was a lot of work. I literally cannot imagine how much work it took to make such a game like that. Within BuildBox 3, you have the mind map. So this is beginning, this is the 3D world, and this is the UI, which controls the interface of how things look, where you touch, keep the score. And in the 3D world, you have your character, you have your objects, and each object has a node. And here is where the no code comes in. So you can grab movements like jump, motor, add sounds, and then connect all them. But to be honest, I am still figuring this out. I am currently at the stage of unconscious incompetence. The way you get past this is to just spend time every day in BuildBox, learning your way around. Someone asked me, how can I make a game in BuildBox 3? Then I asked them, do you have any JavaScript coding experience or making games before? And if the answer is no, you need to slow down and hold your horses because you're not gonna know how to navigate, how to connect the nodes. I don't even know how to connect the nodes and put things together. So these things will take time. Before you get super excited to make a game in a week because somebody did do that, that person probably knew how to code and was within the software for a year and a half while it was in beta, figuring it out with the bugs and now they possibly have a hit game. You cannot get to the finish line before you've even tied your shoes. What kind of shoes do you have? You got Crocs, you can't run in those. The greatest thing about the no code movement is with time, there will only be more and more of these kinds of nodes to help make a game cool, easy, and have everything work together. But is that time today? January, July 18th. I know what month it is. I don't think so. But I've played more BuildBox games than anybody and spent a lot of time in BuildBox 3. And I'm humble enough to know that I am currently in the unconscious competence stage of BuildBox. And if it wasn't for the fact that I'm currently spending all my days in Blender, then yeah, I would be spending more time in BuildBox 3. It all comes together because with Blender, I'll be able to make cool shapes and then put those into BuildBox 3 and spend the time and then like, boom, that's a game. I understand that all these things take time, like a lot of time, like all the time, all the time. So if you're looking to get into BuildBox 3 and make a game this week, this month, and you have no experience, then please t like take a breath and slow down. My experience from BuildBox 2, which to me literally has no code that you ever see, as opposed to BuildBox 3 where the code is there, it's just hidden, and sometimes it's broken. <laughs> So if you know how to code, you can fix it, but otherwise you can send an email to support and hopefully they will fix it. BuildBox 2 took me one year to just get the basics down to be able to make a game that I enjoyed and then maybe another year to be able to just make a game within like 24 hours that's not even that great of a game, but having the ability to go from idea, concept, to actual game on the app store is very rewarding. I'm very excited to see what BuildBox 3 has in store for the future. Been doing a lot more when it comes to communication with its customers via Discord, the forums. I strongly suspect having a game engine company is very similar to like trying to make a game. It is a process. You need to find out what people like, what works, the direction you want to go, Making a game is not easy. It's a lot of work, time, energy, and there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes that if you understand how they work behind the scenes, then you can literally change 
the background of the scenes change, how characters interact in the world, but these things take time. So it's important to understand that there's a lot of depth in the background, what stage you're at when you're learning to make games. Because little by little, you will get better. Little by little, there will be more no code going on and we will understand how it works and put everything together. Could I make a game in Billbox 3 right now? No, I'm still spending hours just trying to figure out how everything works and that's okay because currently I'm in Blender making some cool 3D models that I want to import into BuildBox 3 and then figure out how to use BuildBox 3. Figure out where you're at in the hierarchy of competence, be okay with it, and be willing to commit time. That's my honest review on BuildBox 3. Let me know what you think and what has been your experience. Have you used BuildBox 2? Have you used BuildBox 3? Have you used Unity, Coco 2D, Corona SDK? I got some XP in that. Because at the end of the day, if you're making a game, then you're trying to figure it out just like everybody else. So don't stop, keep at it. If you hit a wall, find a way around it, under it, whatever you gotta do. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you next time.